Hi the berries, welcome to my updated Zyra guide. I did one last year uh, where we went through all her runes and items and abilities and we're going to be doing the same again for this season and this year and well it's now the perfect time to do it because Zyra is going to be buffed in 11.10 which is in a week from releasing this video which will be on Wednesday the 12th of May. So a little Zyra buff coming in so if you are looking at playing her um, particularly because of my re recommendations from my tier list as well, then you've come to the right place to learn how to play Zyra. Now, the runes that you're looking at right on screen at the moment are the easy runes with Zyra. Uh, you don't have to think about too much, uh, and I'll explain why you know these runes are kind of easy. There is a slightly more advanced rune build that you can use in your games, but honestly, it's not necessary, and I usually stick with this rune build in my games, even at high diamond. So you're more than welcome to copy. So Arcane Comet, uh, you'll be doing lots of poke, so that you'll be proccing off Arcane Comet. And with the Scorch right at the bottom here, if your Arcane Comet is about to come off cooldown and you still have Scorch on the target, it will actually proc Arcane Comet as well. So the Scorch has some nice synergy there with the with the Arcane Comet. Mana Flow Band, you're going to want that Mana Regen, pretty standard rune there. And Transcendence as well. Uh, as you get progressed through the game, you're going to get a little bit more Ability Haste and some lower cooldown reduction. Inspiration secondaries here, you could potentially do something in the domination as well, but I think that would overcomplicate things too much. Stick with the biscuits and the cosmic insight. The reason why we go cosmic insight is, well, for, well firstly, it interacts with Ludens if you go into Ludens, which is quite nice. But the, the main reason is because of the summoner spell haste. Plus 18 on that is very good, and that's going to help uh, a little bit with uh, the flash cooldown in particular. And, you know, you're going to be picking up Ignite or Exhaust, so it will help those. But the flash is the big one. Having a much earlier flash is going to help you a lot because Zyra's mobility is pretty bad. It's not terrible, but it's pretty bad. In the stat runes, you've got double adaptive and armor. As always, do play around with the, the armor and magic resist depending on what you're playing against bot lane. If you know you're going up against two uh, magic damage dealers, then obviously take the magic resistance. Um, you can do the eight ability haste if you wish to on the stat runes, but I prefer having the extra raw damage in the laning phase just to outpoke the enemy. And if you're slightly more experienced on the Zyra, you do have this electrocute build. Um, I would only recommend the Electrocute build if you are playing into a bot lane where you can proc this more often. So this could be against a hard engaged uh, champion like a Leona or a Nautilus or something like that or a Thresh. Where it's just more likely that you're going to be proccing off the Electrocute. And I'll explain the, the mechanics of Electrocute. I'll be going into the practice tool with Electrocute to show um, that the various different ways that you can use to, to proc off Electrocute in the lane. You have two options here on the secondary rune here. Taste of Blood will give you some really nice laning sustain. You can do cheap shot at sacrificing some of that sustain for extra damage. It's up to you. Um, it's, it's just purely personal preference here. I like Taste of Blood, uh, but the cooldown, you know, is 20 seconds. is kind of long. Um, you do have cheap shot, which... Um, it's okay. It's just okay. It will proc off the root and her slowing plants that she has. Um, and the cooldown is relatively low, so you could proc this off a few times in a in a, in a, in a game. So uh, Taste of Blood is mainly there for the laning phase, particularly against like champions that can still poke you. Uh, to otherwise, you could do Cheap Shot. Eyeball Collection here uh, is totally fine. Uh, you could also do Zombie Ward. You'll be clearing out wards anyway, so you will be gradually getting those Zombie Wards up anyway. Um, Ghost Pora I wouldn't really bother with at the moment, but so if you're not sure, just generally just stick with eyeballs, you'll be fine. Ultimate Hunter is a really nice one. You won't be picking up too much cooldown reduction with the Zyros, so that does bring down your ult down a fair amount. Otherwise, the other option is Relentless Hunter. That can give you some more out of combat movement speed. Um, but, you know, you're okay. I think you're okay with taking Ultimate Hunter. I think it's slightly better over the Relentless overall. Secondary here, you have two options. You have the biscuits and cookies that we mentioned about earlier in the sorcery tree so for the same reasons. Uh, you could also do mana flow band and transcendence. That is totally fine too. Um, I wouldn't dip into scorch here. I think the scorch damage is a little bit low and it, don't, it doesn't interact with the electrocute either. 
So I personally prefer oops, this for now, the cookies and the cosmic insight. And once again, you can fiddle around with the runes uh, depending what you're going up against. But I think this is a pretty standard rune for Electrocute. Right, so we're going to be going into the practice tour now. Um, we're going to be looking at the abilities first. And then we will be going into the items. So it's depending if you've already watched the ability section of the Zyra Guide before, you may want to skip past. Or if you want a refresher, then, you know, stick around and uh, I'll see what I can do to help you refresh your brain. But the buffs coming in for the next patch for Zyra is that they're going to be increasing the slow on her plants and reducing her W cooldown, which is the seed spawning. So uh, nice little extra quality life uh, buffs for the Zyra for sure, particularly at the, uh, I mean, throughout the entire game, actually, really. So here we are, we are in game. So let me just give myself all the things and stop spawning the minions because minions can interfere quite a lot. Where are they? There they are. Turn them off. And then we're gonna want some target dummies. Okay, so the very first ability on Zyra is her passive. This is Garden of Thorns, and every occasional time she'll spawn plants, little seeds that that you can activate with your with your abilities. Um, if you're standing in a the brush, they won't spawn. As soon as you step out of a brush, they will spawn. That's basically it. So like these little seeds will start spawning from her randomly, just in this circle. I do find like moving backwards and forwards tends to localize it more often. It seems to stay around this area more rather than the outer ring. But there is no consistent, like, easy way to encourage where the seeds are going to spawn. These, This passive is what you should be doing near the uh, your red buff. You should be getting spawning seeds here. Um, and then, you know, using an ability to make them, convert them into plants to help pull, like, the red buff or the blue buff. Uh, depending on which side of the map you're spawning. So you can use these uh, to effectively help pull for your jungler. Just giving myself some levels here. So you would the, you would let the, the seed spawn automatically with the, the Garden of Thorns like this. And then you would just use your ability over and then they would help pull for the buff. Plants on the red and blue buff, they can actually tank four hits. So they're pretty tanky against those objectives as well. So your jungler, if if, the, if you're getting a lucky seed spawn, hopefully the jungler is letting uh, the red or the blue buff tank the plant just to increase their jungle speed, basically. Zara's first ability is her Q. It's this long line here. So on her Q and her E, you'll notice two things. So in her Q, you've got like the brighter middle rectangle box. That's where the actual damage portion of the ability is. So it does dam magic damage in that line there. The extra rectangle is where if there's any seeds, whether it's from your passive or from your W, your W also places seeds. Even though it's not in the center, you can see how those two seeds are in the outer rectangle. It will still spawn those plants. So you can utilize this. I'll show you some advanced tips later on where you can get the maximum amount of use of that outer rectangle. When you use your Q, it will always spawn those little ranged plants there. Uh, they do range damage. Um, we'll talk about plant mechanics shortly. There's some rules to them, uh, but you can essentially use the rules to help target the player that you want to actually be DPSing down or minion. Your W, as mentioned, it just puts down seeds. Um, whenever it's off cooldown, you can use those in combination with your Q and E to spawn more plants, basically. That's basically it, really. Um, when you go into... Um, they do actually give you a little bit of vision in an area. So if you're wanting to face check here temporarily, you can do a W and it will... 
uh, show you the brush a little bit. You can also then, you know, put a plant down there as well, just to give you better vision as well. So you can use your plants. Uh, in order to um, you know, give you vision of those objectives. And any plants that you do spawn as well can pop to like Timo mushrooms, gin traps, nearly traps, like other things like that as well. So there are some, some ways to pop those as well. And also like if you're up against the Maokai, his little saplings, they'll be lured to that. And also they can pop shaker boxes. Or those shaker boxes um, will instantly kill a plant, which is kind of annoying. But it does pop, make it so that the, the Shaco Jack in a Box is out there and not hidden. And uh, it does then despawn after a couple of seconds. So that's everything to do with the, the range plants and the, the W for now. Her E is a root, a long range root. Slowly travels across the ground. Now, once again, you've got that outer rectangle, so the thin, kind of like blue rectangle in the middle, the bright one, is where the actual ability is going into. And the outer re box is where the, the, the plants are going to spawn. And these plants are different to the range ones. These are melee plants. So these melee plants, when they hit, they do the same damage as a range plant. But they also slow the target, and that can stack up twice. So what you can get here is you can effectively get two plants stacking this slow on this target. Which will be, at the moment it's on 50%, so 25% slow per plant. When next patch comes around, it should go up to 60% slow, so quite a considerable slow. Zara's ultimate is a big circle AoE. It takes a second to detonate, but it does damage as is expanding out. So when the roots finally expand out, it does do damage. And then if they're still in the circle after that duration, then they get knocked up. Another benefit of this ultimate as well is that it buffs your plants. So it basically enrages the, the plants, it resets the duration so that they last the full duration again. They gain 50% health and 50% more damage. So let's have a look at that here. So we can do a mix here, we can do some range plants and some melee plants. The ulti then enrages them and it increases their... it doesn't mention it in the, uh, in the tooltip. But it definitely increases their attack speed as well. And now about resetting the duration. So you see that white bar above the health bar? That's the duration of the plant. If we put the ulti down, the white bar then resets. And this plant is now up for longer. That's kind of more useful around like objectives, like big objectives like Baron and the like elder dragon you can have say for example you put down a couple of seeds at the location with your passive then you have two seeds stored from your w so then you do your, your q you're doing these are doing shots 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 and then you do your ulti and then you've got one extra seed coming through because should have timed it better but in theory, you would have like five plants lined up there that would be enraged. You can get the maximum amount there, but you need to, you know, obviously decide whether that's worth it or not. Um, so using your ultimate on, on the Baron is a possibility, but it's not always fully recommended to do that. Just in case a team fight breaks out and you need it for the actual fight itself. Right, so plant mechanics. So we're going to get into some uh, interesting things here. So... Plants will always target uh, the nearest target unless uh, you've told it to do otherwise. So you can actually control what these plants actually target. So they'll always hit the nearest target. Uh, so say if I spawn three range plants here, they're going to automatically target this dummy in front of me. But if I land an ability on the middle one even though it's not the nearest from these two here at least anyway they will actually attack this middle one 
That's because they're prioritizing focusing the target that you've damaged with your ability. Although interestingly, those plants then suddenly switched halfway through. These plants can sometimes be a little bit uncontrollable at the same time. Um, you can also guide them as well with an auto hit. Uh, so how can we... Okay, so th let's spawn these plants here onto the middle one. And then we go, okay, we want to attack this back one. So now they've all switched. The front one. Now it's switched to the front one. Back one, etc. So you can also tell them which target to attack. Not only with your abilities, but also your auto attacks. So it can... This can help like when you're pushing out a wave and you don't want to like accidentally last to hit CS. You can auto attack a different minion so that the plants attack a different one. So like once if you want to focus the cannon minion, you can auto hit the cannon minion. If you want to focus on a high priority target, you can make sure you just get the auto attack in to them so that they follow up. Or land an ability on them. So you have a couple of methods there of, sort of making sure that you focus on specifically the target that you want to. Um, because you could have like a really low health target here in the middle, like the AD carry, but you didn't quite hit them and you hit like this front dummy. So you really need to then land that auto attack over and just get make sure that any plants that are up are hitting that priority target. It does seem like though the auto attack only lasts their attention though for a second or two. They will then switch back to the nearest target again and break the rule. I don't know why that's the case. It shouldn't be doing that, I don't think. But, you know, hopefully you're still landing abilities or whatever on, on the, the priority target rather than the nearest target. Uh, one or two other things about these plants as well. The plants will die in one hit to melee hits. Um, any champions that have, like, Hydra... Hydra basically the item Hydra will one shot plants as well. So there's a couple of uh, items in the game and the and melee hits will get rid of them very very easily. Uh, you'll probably find that out as you play her more and more often that you know you'll find one or two annoying champions or items or things that will clear out the uh, the plants in general and very quickly. But you know, generally for the long part they're they're pretty healthy and pretty tanky. Is there anything else there in the ability section I want to cover? Yes, there is actually. There's some advanced plants uh, as well, skill shots that you're going to need to be learning and practicing, potentially in the practice tool. So the main combination that you want to do with these abilities is you always want to do your Q or E first and then do your W. Um, what you'll see if like a lot of fresh slash you know, newbie Zyra players doing is you'll see them do... Uh, the W, and then doing the Q. But that's actually like 50% longer of a, like a whole rotation. So when you're doing the Q animation, you can actually spawn a seed. And it basically spawns pretty much instantly. So you do your Q and your W in that animation. And you can do the same with the E as well. Now the cool thing about this is, is that you know whether or not this ability is going to hit and you can then redirect your plants. So for example, let me just get a training dummy over here. Say, say for example, I'm firing out this skill shot and I realize like halfway through the animation it's not going to hit the target. So it's going to miss, right? But what I can do is halfway through the animation, I can redirect. And remember that box that we were talking about? I can get some plants over in that direction during the animation of the spell. So like that. And then we're still hitting that pers person with the maximum slow. And they're still taking damage. So yes, our main ability missed. And we're not doing that damage there. And we're not rooting the target. But those slows can sometimes be incredibly valuable. Uh, in pinning down a target still. You can obviously do the same with the Q as well. Like, you know, you, you've missed your Q, but you can then get a plant like in the nearer vicinity as well. But it's more relevant with the grasping roots because it's another good reason why you want to learn doing the ability first and the W. Because if I do like the W, then the E, 
and I hit the target, great. But what happens if I miss? So if I, then I, I, then I miss, then it ends up a little bit more awkward. You could have got that plant over a little bit more, which means they can move out one or two extra plant auto hits, which could be the difference between a kill and them getting away. So always, always, always the Q or E, then W. And you can do those in the mashing down as well. So you could like mash Q, uh, Q E, and then do the W as well. And depending on the timing of you pressing W, the first ability that pops up first will spawn those plants. So if you do Q, E, and then just like wait out a little bit, you can get it so that it's the right pl a plant that comes out too. But it's sometimes quite difficult to actually choose which one that you want when you're mashing the Q and the E at the same time. Sometimes it's better just to spam everything and then, you know, use your ulti to, to try and finish them off while they're in the route. But yeah, the basic combination for Zyra is ideally you're prioritizing these slowing plants. You're rooting the target in place, you're ulting and then using your Q as an overlap, as a guaranteed damage. Because once you know the target's rooted, it's very easy for you to ensure that they get knocked up from the ultimate and it's a very easy Q hit. In terms of skill order for Zyra, you have a couple of options. Uh, if you're going Arcane Comet, I generally would recommend you putting 5 points in your Q, and then maxing your E, and then finally your W. If you're doing Electrocute first, you can max your E first, because you're more likely to get Electrocute procs off, and then your Q, and then finally your W. Alternatively, if you want to, in either the Arcane Comet or Electrocute build, you can just put two or three points in your Q for poke damage, and then max your E, and then come back to your Q and then finish it off. The reason why you might want to do that is because your damage isn't that high, you haven't done that particularly well maybe in the laning phase, uh, and then you're ending up much more on the utility end. Every point that you put in your E inc increases the root duration, so at the start it only lasts one second, but then it goes all the way up to two. So that extra second could make the difference potentially in that utility front side of things. Just uh, take in, take into mind that the every time you put a point in your Q or E, it does not increase the plant damage of those relative types. The plant damage is always the same no matter what. Okie dokie, okie dokie. Right, um, we'll talk very, very briefly about Electrocute. So if you're not familiar with uh, Electrocute and how that works, so three separate attacks on a target will proc Electrocute. Each unique plant counts as an Electrocute charge. So what you can do in lane, is say if you land E in two plants, that would proc Electrocute. Uh, you know, you could always fire your Q over as well, but each unique plant will proc Electrocute. Gotta wait for these runes to come off cooldown. So each unique plant, we could do like three plants here. Just waiting for this electrocute. Three plants would proc the electrocute. Um, so you can you have lots of different avenues here to proc up the electrocute. So as long as you're weaving in, you can weave in an auto attack if needed as well to help proc electrocute. But you can see like how against double poke compositions, so say for example like a Varus Lux bot lane, uh, they have a lot of poke. So you, it's difficult to get into this like mid range where you sometimes have to use your auto attack to get that third hit to proc the electrocute. So it can just be best, better and, and much safer just to do arc and comet because then you can just stand back with a plant, that plant hits and then it would then proc the, the Arcane Comet going over. And then that would apply the Scorch debuff and etc. So Scorch is the safer one, uh, Arcane Comet is the safer one. Electrocute is much more like we, we're going to be much more involved um, and have to get those auto hits in. Right, we're going to be looking at the items now for Zyra and there's two, the builds are very similar, um, but there's two different mythic items that you need to look at and think about when you're going into a game. Starting off with Spell Thief's Edge. Spell Thief's Edge will also proc off plants as well. So plus 20. Well, it would be plus 20 if I had an allied 
champion nearby. Let me just spawn an allied champion dummy. There we go. So you got 20 gold for the initial hit of the spell with McHugh. And the plant also procs 20. Um, and as you saw again there, it also procced it again. There seems to be some sort of like, you know how um, we saw earlier the aggro reset changed? After telling the target on the auto attack, it reset. It seems to affect, <laughs> it seems to affect the spell thieves as well. So it'll do 20 on the initial and if like it gets to around about 10% left on the duration, it can proc it again. So some weird, as I said before, some weird bug uh, plants, but it works in our favor. So I'm not going to complain about it too much, but you can essentially get up to 40 gold from one plant. So the two different items that you're going to be want to be looking for um, is either Leandries or Ludens. So Leandries is built against teams that have lots of maximum HP, so generally tank team compositions. I would say Leandries is okay option against two tanks, ideally versus three. Um, if you're not sure, then just always go Ludens, or if you notice two or fewer tanks on the enemy team, just go Ludens. The reason behind this is that Ludens uh, works really nicely with the plants. So if you keep an eye on the, we've got Cosmic Insight as well, so we're already reducing the um, the Ludens proc by one second anyway here. But every time a plant hits, so say, you know, this plant here, I need to turn off, okay, it's gonna proc every single time because of the cooldowns, sorry. So every time a plant hits, it's going to reduce the cooldown of Ludens by 0.5 seconds up to the first six hits from the plant. So it's the initial hit will proc Ludens, and then every hit after that, it's going to take 0.5 seconds off the cooldown on Ludens. So now if you can imagine, we do a whole rotation here with our Ludens fresh up, we're going to be able to probably proc it two in a bigger fight with the ulti, we're resetting the duration three times. Uh, so you're going to get a lot of hits off here, and this is particularly good against some of those squishier targets. So I'm going to do a full rotation here, and we're going to see the damage. So I've got the root down there, popping my ulti, and then doing my Q. So that's two Ludens procs gone off there already. That's three. Might get another one off here. Four just about at the very end there. I think it's probably unreasonable to assume you're going to get four that quickly in a team fight, but over a slightly long, prolonged like extra team fight there, you could easily get four, five procs going off. Um, I mean, and that also wasn't set up with any passive seeds as well. That was just using two seeds from my W. So you can see that you can get you know a fair amount of Luden procs every time Luden's procs. You get the movement speed, and you're going to be doing extra damage. Uh, to multiple targets as well not just at the target that you're hitting but it's going to splash around a little bit too so you can see how it can become pretty valuable and the damage adds up particularly against those squishy targets or those me medium squishy targets quite a lot uh, in terms of boots uh, one of the first things that you're going to be looking for uh, in by in the buying the game is Zyra's main weakness is mobility, so ideally you want to get these sulk shoes in as quickly as possible and then look for your your um your mythic. Fortunately, you know, you got lost chapter is built in both of these item paths. So you can kind of like, you know, you don't have to decide too early in the game which one you want. Uh, you know, even if you're up against tanks and your team's doing particularly well, the Ludens is a really good snowball tool. So Ludens overall is going to be more useful for you than the Leandries. So we take the Ludens here. And then you're always going to be wanting to take this Demonic Embrace. Is the, the second best item here for, for Zyra. What Demonic Embrace does is, once again, it uh, does percent max health damage, but the plants uh, enable you to basically have that lasting for quite some time. So it's refreshing. Every time the plant hits, the Demonic Embrace is still ticking over and doing damage. Tick, tick, tick. And now it's like leftover, and it's still lingering on the target for quite some time. Um, so even if they do have one or two tanks on the team, this Demonic Embrace is still going to be doing a lot of damage um, against the enemy team. 
so win-win. This is basically your standard like kind of like set of items here for Zyra. You've got some control wards here. You're going to have your spell feast fully converted. Um, you know, this here in your inventory is what you're going to be having for pretty much every single game. Getting more than this is difficult, but you can always go into a Zonius if you need to. I would recommend that. If the enemy team has a lot of healing, also Moralonomicon is a very, very good option. Um, unless the enemy team has lots of tanks and you've got that Leandries, you might need a Void Staff if your team has a lot of ability power. Void Staff, third item, also could be a reasonable option as well. Um, Rylize, I would generally stay clear of. I don't think it's needed. We're considering that you already slow anyway with your E plants. Um, I feel like it's a little bit waste of money, but it's it's not over. It's not it's not the worst item that you could buy. Um, but I think the Morello and the Zonias or the Void Staff are the main three contenders. And then you know if you're still looking, you, you really need control wards still, especially for those objectives. So you could uh, after you've done all of that, if you still if the game's still going on, you can pick up one of those ward stones and you know fully convert that into the vigilant ward stone. That will give you um, more control ward slots, give you a lot more cooldown reduction, movement speed, and will allow you to place down an extra normal stealth ward and have two control wards on the map at the same time so this ward stone is underrated and uh, can potentially be very powerful um, you need to be level 13 to be able to purchase the vigilant ward stone and you need to be able to put down 20 stealth wards in order to do that but you know if you can meet those requirements then you know you're going to be good to go um Apart from that, what else do I need to mention? There's some dragon mechanics with the plants, but this is the general like item build. It's not too complicated on Zyra. Um, you know, you're going to be taking generally Ludens, generally Demonic Brace, Demonic Embrace, like second item, 99% of your games, and any of the Zonias, Rallo, Void stuff. Easy, easy stuff to remember. Um, on stuff like Dragon, Zyra is really, really good. One of the best things about Zyra in Soda Q is that she's very, very good on these neutral objectives. Now here's some tips for, for Dragon. Uh, dragons uh, always deal two damage to a plant. Plants have four health. So it takes two hits from a dragon to kill a plant. Now the Earth Drake, the Mountain Drake, and the, the, and the Infernal Drake do AoE. So in that cone, it will do two damage to every single plant in front of them. So you want to be making sure that your plants aren't stacked up on top of each other, that you've got them spread out sufficiently so they don't get cleaved down essentially uh, at the same time. Um, but even with that, the Cloud Drake, ironically this one has spawned for us, is actually the worst one to do for Zyra in terms of plant tanking. Because all the dragons do two damage, the Cloud Drake has the fastest attack speed, and it does really nuke down those plants really, really quickly. So those uh, are the, that's the worst one for you. Um, the Ocean Drake as well is relatively easy to do. Um, if you do get hit by the Ocean Drake, you do get slowed, so do bear that, like that in mind. Um, but the Earth Drake, is, even though it does the AoE, is actually the Mountain Drake is very very easy to kill because his, his attack speed is actually halved so your tank your plants can basically tank an, an entire dura plant duration on on an earth drake i don't know why i keep calling it earth drake mountain drake um so yeah mountain drakes are by far the easiest for zara to kill and cloud drakes are the most annoying so uh, if i just spawn try and spawn only one of these plants here you can see how quickly the dragon kills it. It killed it in like one second. Boom. Boom. Very, very fast attack speed. Extremely annoying to kill. There we go. Getting my vengeance on it right now. So Cloud Drake just, you know, factor that in. You can, for the other Drakes, uh, you want to try and see if you can use the plants to tank the dragon. And just take some of that health pressure, particularly if it's like the first dragon. Um, your junglers might need a, a little bit of help um, and the plants can do a very good job at tanking tanking the drakes for them. Uh, Herald as well. Herald isn't up at the moment. Baron has spawned unfortunately. 
um, but Herald is similar to this as well. She's very, very easy to kill as well. She does two damage as well to plants, so you can easily kite uh, and drag around the the Herald and, you know, waiting for your Ws to be back up and things. And it is a bit of a pain to do, but it, it is possible to actually solo that as Zyra. It just takes a little bit of time if you, in case you ever end up in a situation like that. Uh, Baron loves to nuke the plants quite effectively. Uh, you don't, when you're putting your plants down, you're not going to want to actually tank the Baron. You're going to want to ideally have them out a little bit so someone else is main tanking the Baron. And then your plants are. Because here, here the Baron is now focusing me. His attack speed is quite high, but you can see how my plants aren't taking that much damage, or any damage, in fact. Um, whereas if the plants were tanking it, that plant is going to die relatively quickly. So when you're putting plants down for the Baron, you want them further out of the pit. Generally, it depends also what side of the map you're on as well. So if we're on this side, I might want to put the plants more around like this area here. So that when we have enemy of the vision, they might switch over. Say I land an ability over the wall, they'll switch over and focus them. If we're on red side, the opposite side of the map, then we're probably more likely going to want to make sure we keep plants um, on this side of the Baron because the enemy will be coming in from these avenues. And if they come in and try and like steal the Baron, they'll have to go through a couple of plants in order to do that. So do you think a little bit about the plant uh, targeting if, you, if you're able to and the plant positioning on the Baron? But other than that, I think we've covered everything. I think Zyra is extremely strong. If you're watching this and you're unranked uh, or iron, bronze, silver, gold, I think Zyra is an amazing champion for a support to play. She gives you a lot of control, as you, know, you can see from these objectives alone, and she does a lot of damage throughout the entire game. Um, I think she's extremely good. The only champion that does more damage than her in this in the support role is Brand, and I have already done a Brand guide in case you want to see that one. But Brand doesn't have as much um, control in a team fight. I think Brand's objective taking is still is as good as Zyra. It's like Zyra can use her plants to tank the objectives, but Brand does more damage to the neutral objectives with his passive. Uh, but that's uh, a different champion and a different story. But both uh, Zyra and Brand are extremely good for supports right now in terms of solo queue carrying. Zyra is um, also got the added benefit of Brand's not as viable in Plat Plus. But uh, Zyra is. I played Zyra m much more frequently than Brand in a high ELO, kind of like, you know, Diamond 1, Low Master kind of area. I've been playing Zyra. So she's definitely viable as well in those higher ranks. So you could essentially one trick Zyra, whereas, whereas I wouldn't recommend one tricking Brand, as you'll have uh, more difficulties uh, for sure, just because, you know, the extra crowd control that the. The Zara brings with her roots and knockups and things are overall um, much better throughout the entire game, mainly phase and going through the mid game, etc. Well, I hope this Zara updated guide helps you out. And uh, you know, if you did watch the previous guide from last year, I hope this gives you a bit of a refresher course. Hope you give her a try. You know, she's getting buffed as I mentioned very soon, so now's the time to kind of like play her before she gets nerfed because I don't know why they're buffing her because she's already really strong. Um, and I'll be uploading also some Zara gameplay as well today for you to enjoy, uh, you know, to go and, and complement this kind of like video as well. I won't put this, the, the gameplay video on top of this one, otherwise it's going to be an extremely long video, but I will link a Zara uh, gameplay session underneath the video down below in the comment section when that video is out for you to have a look at. That should be either high diamond 2 or low diamond 1 gameplay so very very like high ELO content that I've been playing Zyra still with so if you guys enjoyed that if you like that and you want to see more guides make sure you like and subscribe well done for making it to the end of the video and I hope you enjoyed the rest of your day and I hope this video obviously helps you out good luck and let me know how the solo queue grind goes